Aren't you a bit old to be playing dress up? What in God's name are you doing here? I'd be asking you the same question. A young woman called me. A little. I ought to put a bullet between your eyes! Come on, picks! Your game is up, Mickey! Your daughter, I presume? Yeah. Oh. You must have your hands full with those two. She is quite something. Yeah, that she is. And that was a clip from Pixie. It says it's an Irish gangster romp. I'm not sure that we're going to go along with that necessarily. Anyway, it's directed by Barnaby Thompson. It's in cinemas from today. The cast includes Olivia Cook, Alec Baldwin, and the great Cole Meany. I'm delighted to say Cole is joining us from... Uh, to be honest, I haven't got the first idea where. So come in, Cole Meany, can you hear me? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I can. So thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, I'm actually I'm da- I'm in Portugal. I'm uh, in the Algarve in Portugal and working on a on a film here. Okay, so so work so working is continuing then, and work and travel and industry is all fine for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there was you know from March till uh, pretty much the end of August, beginning of September, there was nothing nothing really happening, and then um, things started to open up again. So this is the work done. All this side of the ocean. Uh, the, the the previous one was I uh, was shooting in in the UK, and this one, as I say, is here in Portugal. But things have opened up, I think, more quickly in Europe than they have in the US. You know. So and things are kind of shutting down in Ireland and in various stages uh, in the UK. What's uh, what, what's it like working in Portugal? Are you kind of very much aware that you're working on a, a you know a COVID movie? Really? Yeah, I mean we're, we're we're in a kind of a bubble here. You know, we basically go from hotel to set and back again, and we're not uh, we're not supposed to go out. You know, and we haven't been out to any kind of bars or restaurants or anything like that. And uh, everyone was tested uh, before they came here and then after they arrived, uh, before we started working. So everyone is, is thoroughly tested. And, and each department kind of keeps to itself. You know, the actors stick with the actors and the prop guys stick with themselves. It's, it's, it's odd. It's, 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 it's different, you know. Yeah, does that take a lot of the fun out of filming? It does a bit, and everybody's wearing a mask, you know, and obviously we have to take them off when we actually film. But uh, you know, it, it is. It's 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 a peculiar atmosphere, yeah. And and also, you know, there's sort of one way systems around the set. You can only walk in one direction and things like that. To, but but it's you know, it's to, it's to keep us safe and to keep us uh, working, you know. So so we 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 just get on with it. So Pixie, of course, taking us back to pre-COVID times, as all the movies are, they're reviewing this, you know, the conveyor belt comes through and we're still looking at movies from before the world changed. But what a delightful, what a delightful film this is. I, I loved it. And uh, it was written down as an Irish gangster romp, but I'm mm-hmm. not quite sure about that. How would you describe it, Colm? Um, I, 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 I kind of think that describes it reasonably well. Um, I, but but I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, it is a delightful film. It was a delightful read. When I first got the script, I, I was like absolutely charmed by, you know, it, 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 the, the idea of the, gang, the gangster priests and nuns and, and, and it, it was just uh, sort of so wacky and, and, and fun. And it was a, a page turner of a read, you know, I found it delightful. It, it has that feeling of, I mean, I hesitate to use all these phrases, but, you know, it's Tarantino style violence. But mm-hmm. it's it's still a romp, and it's still it's still laugh out loud funny. And to get that balance right, you know, because it would be very easy to get it get it catastrophically wrong. But I, you know, you guys absolutely hit it. Oh, well, I'm very glad to hear that. I mean, it's it it is a difficult balance to to, to get. But I think Barnaby, uh, the director, was and and Preston, his son, wrote the script. I think they were very clear about the the style of the picture and what they were what they were trying to achieve and I think they did it brilliantly you know as you say I mean everything is a little bit tongue-in-cheek you know from the gangster priests to the violence and 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 you never feel it's exploiting or trying to be shocking or anything like that it's 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 got a lovely kind of good humor tone to it I think I imagine it's very unusual to have a father and son as director and screenwriter yeah, yeah, I think it is. The last time uh, I experienced that was uh, with John Houston uh, and Tony Houston. His son wrote the uh, screenplay for The Dead, uh, which I think is it was like 1987, I want to say. So it's a long time yeah. ago. But, 
<laughs> a long time ago. And and yeah, it, um, I mean, but but this was, I mean, this experience with with, with Barnaby and Preston was remarkable. I've, I mean, I, I I've said before in interviews that I've never seen a father son get on better than these guys did. They really kind of you know they clicked with each other and they. You, you, you know, they understood each other. They're on the same page with, uh, about things and they really complemented each other brilliantly. Tell us about your, your gangster uh, character, Colm, because I think you had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I'm, 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 I am I'm play Pixie's stepdad and he's very fond of her. He's She's probably his favourite. Well, he has two daughters and a, and a very, very sort of difficult son who he has a hard time with. But the two daughters he gets on very well with. And and likes them very much, and and I, I, I he is a gangster himself, but he's a gangster who has got to the point in his career where he he doesn't really want to do it anymore. It's kind of all got a bit old for him, and he um he all you know he, he's he's become very interested in cooking, and he likes to watch cooking shows, and that's really what he wants to do um, instead of going around kind of beating people up and shooting people. And as I say, Pixie is is probably his favorite of his three kids delightfully played by uh, Olivia Cook. That, that, that's, that's sort of who I am in the picture. Yeah, and uh, I guess we've all met people like your Sligo gangster because, you know, they've done a job for a long time and they're quite good at it, but they just can't be bothered to do it anymore. It's just, as far as this movie's <laughs> concerned, you ha- this happens to be a gangster who kills people. Exactly, exactly. That's it in a nutshell, yeah. He's he's had enough. It's, it's he's tired of it. Yeah, we, and we see we see you doing uh, chopping vegetables, watching mm. Nigella on your laptop. You'd far rather be cooking than than killing. Yes, yeah, exactly. He's watching Nigella, and then he's interrupted by you know, oh, you know, they've killed such and such. They shot so and so. Oh, geez, God, oh, well, I better respond to that. <laughs> oh, you know, which he 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 doesn't want to do. He wants to he wants to continue with his with his cooking show. Now, from my ears, Colm, Olivia Cook's accent is terrific and and ben hardy so so olivia is from oldham and ben hardy is from bournemouth but for, to, to my english ears their irish accent was spot on what did it sound like to you absolutely the same absolutely spot on i mean pitch perfect olivia as i said was you know delightful as pixie and, and ben the same I and mean, he, he just a lovely performance and and a perfect accent yeah and you've mastered so many accents over the years. I, 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 and I'm always fascinated by voice and I'm always fascinated by accent. Mm-hmm. And obviously there are some people who can do it and there are some people who can't. But as someone who's mastered many, many uh, accents, do you just have to have a particular ear for it? Does the trainer do a lot of the work? Uh, um, yeah, it's, well, I think it's, I think it's a lot to do with the ear. And, 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 you know, interesting enough, I think actors, younger actors, are better at doing accents than maybe actors of my generation were. And I, I think it's because they're exposed to more accents from an earlier age, maybe, or so. I, 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 you know, especially for British actors playing American or something like that, they, they, they really have it down, you know. And and but but a dialect coach can help as well. I mean, I, I remember um, one in particular for me was uh, playing Don Revy in the Damn United, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and 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 he had a sort of a he had a sort of a hybrid accent, you know. It was kind of like because he was born, he was a Geordie, and he was born in the northeast. But but spent a lot of his life in Yorkshire and Lancashire, so it was kind of like he wandered a little bit at times. So and and I had a wonderful uh, dialect coach in that, and she helped me tremendously with it. And once you once you've mastered an accent, can you go back to it, or is it sort of is it like gone with you know with the script? Just as much as you can't remember the lines from a movie twenty years ago, you can't remember the voice either. Yeah, it's it's it. I mean, I think you you need a little bit of if if you runs at it to get it back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not gone completely. But it's not it's not there at the tip of your tongue anymore. That's for sure. If they asked you to do Don Revy again, you'd find it somewhere within you. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about that now. Uh, it was sort of it was sort of like that one. It, um, you know, my boys. Uh, 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 oh man, no, it's not there. It's not there right now. Give me give, give me twenty minutes. I'll come back to you with it. <laughs> I realise you didn't do requests. You was not asking yeah. you to. Uh, no, to but it was, I'm curious question. about that. It's an interesting question, you know. I, I, I never really thought about that. And I always marvel at acting. When we spoke, we've spoken to Sir Sharon a few times on the programme, yeah. and she's certainly on top of every single accent going. Yeah, she's wonderful, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I mean about younger, younger actors having a great facility with, with, with accents. You know, they really do. I don't want to give anything away about sort of the climax of the film, but you've already talked about priests uh, and nuns with guns, and there is a fantastic shootout 
in a church. Can you just uh, whet our appetite just a little bit about that? Because it's it's a terrific piece. Yeah, well, 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 basically, my character and and uh, the priest, the, the leader of the priest gang, like played by Alec Alec Baldwin, we we are old sort of enemies, but we sort of had a truce going for many many years, and uh, but then things go a little bit awry, and and we're forced into a confrontation again, and the culmination of that confrontation is this shootout in the in in the church between his gang which is made up of priests and nuns, and my gang, which is basically a bunch of uh, gangsters and hoodlums, you know? <laughs> and that is sort of the, uh, the, the climax of the film, if you like. That's, that's the, 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 end, the end of the road. Yeah, Alec Baldwin said he doesn't want his priest to see this film. My hunch is Alec Baldwin's priest is going to love this film. I, yeah, I think so too. Because as you say, it's it's very good humoured. I mean, I don't think anybody, you know, seriously believes we're suggesting that uh, th- there is a, a a gang of priests who are dealing drugs in Ireland, but but they are kind of fun characters to, uh, to watch in a in a film. And I, yeah, I think you know any 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 open minded priest, I think would would get would knock a lot of fun out of it. Exactly. I know we started talking about the fact you're out in Portugal um, mm-hmm. and uh, you're filming. That's why we're occasionally talking over each other because there's this satellite delay, which we're kind of getting used to, but it's still kind of annoying as well. Um, we've spoken recently to to Ben Wheatley about his new movie, Rebecca, and we've spoken to Spike Lee about his uh, current film. And both Spike Lee and Ben Wheatley both said they weren't really prepared to go back to the cinema to watch a film. Mm-hmm. So you've spoken about what it's like to make a movie and all the precautions that are there to make sure that everyone is safe. Would you be happy Kong, to go back to the cinema and watch a movie? Yeah, well, yes, I think I would. Um, funnily enough, I don't, I don't, you know, I've kind of got out of the habit of going into the cinema in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so. Um, and I think it's because, you know, we have all the streaming services and everybody has a big, wide, big screen TV in their home. So we tend to see a lot of films in that in that situation rather than the cinema. So, but, but uh, no, I think I, I think I would. I, I think, you know, once there was social distancing and, and, and I think masks, uh, very importantly, people wearing masks. So I think I would. I'm not sure my wife would let me, but uh, I think I would be prepared <laughs> to, to, to. She's she's. Super cautious about the whole this pandemic, you know, and rightly so. And after Pixie, what do we see next in Colm? What- um, I'm not sure what comes up. Well, I think Singapore Grip, I believe, just finished. Uh, it's a six part part of Rye TV that just finished in the UK, I believe. A film I just wrapped a couple of weeks ago is called Little People, a sort of a horror film. And after this, I go back actually to the UK. The, 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 uh, this this film is called uh, There's Always Hope. Um, it's a sort of, a, I suppose, a romantic comedy in a way. It's a family film. And then the next one is, is uh, I'm back to gangster, gangster. I'm actually playing a priest, not a gangster, but a, 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 a priest who is trying to um, mediate between two FBI agents who both claim the other is bad. So we don't know who the who the crook is, but it's called Confession. It's a very, it's a very, very nice uh, thriller. So I, I guess probably the next next one after this will be um, will be the Little People, probably in the, in in the spring. All right, lots to look forward to. Colm Meany, thank you so much for speaking to us from Portugal today, and stay well, sir. Thank you so much, Sam. Pleasure speaking to you. Bye bye.